Hi everybody, Ms. Dietschy again from your WCA Biology A class. And um, today we are looking at your next lesson in Unit 2, which is the Essential Sugar Molecule Lesson 3. So some of this is going to be repetition from the stuff that we already covered in Lesson 2. Some of it's going to be kind of a kind of foreshadowing or prequel to some of the stuff we're going to be going through later. So um, there's a lot of stuff that they bring up in this unit, and I don't want you to be overwhelmed with some of the processes they talk about, because we're going to spend time later going through them in depth. And more importantly, remember the title of this unit is called, or the title of this lesson is called The Essential Sugar Molecule. So we're going to talk a little bit about sugar today. So keeping in mind that I still do have a notes guide that kind of goes with this, I pulled out some of the key ideas and put an outline together that's linked to my website right under the video that you're watching right now. Um, so the, the vocab terms here, we have our amino acids, the building blocks of protein, carbohydrates, cellular respiration, dehydration synthesis, glucose, nucleotide, photosynthesis and starch. So again, vocab heavy, right? That's kind of why I'm making these videos to begin with, but I want us to focus on kind of the over, kind of overarching theme here, which is sugar. So the introduces it by saying, you take a bite of fruit, it's real tasty, it's real sweet. You ever wonder where this sugar comes from? So the plant makes the sugars, right? So we know that plants have these little things inside of them, these little organelles that we call chloroplasts. And you probably have heard this at some point in the past. In the chloroplasts, there is a process that occurs called photosynthesis. And I'm, I'm hoping that you've already heard of photosynthesis in the past, too, because I know they talk about that with littles on up. Right? So photosynthesis is by taking some ingredients, like carbon dioxide and water, and the energy from the sun to actually do the reaction and convert those ingredients into sugar, glucose, C6H12O6. Right? And so here's an overview of the chloroplast. Here's that sunlight coming in. This is a little thing inside the chloroplast called a... Um, called a thylakoid, and inside the thylakoid and outside the thylakoid, we have this whole process of photosynthesis. Here is a little bit of sneak peek here, a little, um, little spoiler alert, if you will. We will actually be studying photosynthesis more in depth in this whole, um, in this semester. So we'll be spending a lot more time looking at this picture and understanding more of what's going on there. So for now, it's a pretty picture of chloroplast, and there's sun, and there's other symbols in there. You don't need to know all of them at this time, but understanding kind of that this is how sugar is produced. Sugar is a simple six-carbon molecule. This is glucose. This is not the stuff you put in your cereal, only if you're like eating something very plain like cornflakes. Um, it's not the stuff that you you know you put in your Kool-Aid or whatever. That's sucrose. That's a different kind of sugar. This is glucose. This is the simplest of the sugars. So it has six carbons to it. It's, it's a ring molecule like this. These sugars can bond together, so the glucose molecules can stick together one after the other and produce longer molecules. We call those carbohydrates. And remember, carbon has those four valence electrons in its outer shell. That means that it can bond with lots of different things, including itself. Yeah, it can actually form bonds with other carbon molecules, which means it can form these long, complex molecules, these carbohydrates, these big hydrocarbons, right? Um, moving on here, it talks about starch. Starch is a kind of a carbohydrate, and we like starches. Well, personally, I do. I like pasta. I like rice. I like my carbs. They're delicious. Um, some people can't eat them, you know, especially if they have a lot of glucose intolerance. Not all starches equal glucose, by the way. That's different. Or not glucose. Um, 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 what is the word I'm thinking of right now? It's not glucose. It is gluten. Ugh. Get old and your brain stops working real well. So if you, have a, if you can't eat gluten, you know, maybe you have an intolerance. Maybe you have something like celiacs or something like that. But a lot of those starches have gluten in them. Not all of them do. There are other starches that don't have gluten, things like corn, 
and oats and stuff like that. So in any case, um, it says here, this is a log, kind of a complex thing here, glucose molecules bond at the OH, which is hydroxide, at the hydroxide site. For That's here, here, okay, and here. So they bond together there. For two glucose molecules to bond, one glucose releases a hydrogen atom and the other glucose needs to release an hydroxide group, allowing the carbons to bond with the remaining oxygen. So they're basically releasing one hydrogen and one full hydroxide, one OH. So an H plus an OH is H2O. So they're releasing water. So in order for sugars to bond together to make starch, water gets released. When water gets released, we call that dehydration. You're making something new. You're making a longer starch molecule, so you're synthesizing something, and you're also getting drier. You're releasing. You're actually releasing water, right? So it's dehydration synthesis. That's the name of the reaction. So it's the reaction that forms these long starch molecules because they have to release a hydrogen and a hydroxide, which makes water, and um, it's making a new molecule, it's making starch, so that's called synthesis, that's a type of chemical reaction, so it's the dehydration synthesis reaction. And it says the same chemical reaction produces other types of starches and stuff, like cellulose. Cellulose is a different carbohydrate other than starch that is um, made in the cell walls of plants. So cellulose is um, what plants make make themselves rigid and firm so that they can stand up. They don't have skeletons, so their cellulose cell walls kind of help with that. And, um, you know, that's the stuff that we can't really digest very well, cellulose. So when you eat plants and you get a lot of fiber, it's because that cellulose is indigestible by humans, and so it helps to absorb water and kind of you know, keep you nice and regular, that kind of fun stuff. It's, it's good for the digestive system. All right, so that is um, that chunk of the lesson. And then it basically talks about another process called cellular respiration. So photosynthesis is how the sugar was made, and then respiration is how the sugar is used. <clears throat> so your body uses cellular respiration. It takes that glucose, that sugar, once you've eaten it, and it breaks it down to be able to make a molecule called ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. And ATP is basically how we get our um, energy. All right, so cellular respiration, what we were talking about is a um, process that takes that sugar molecule and basically there's energy that's stored in the bonds. So you've got all of those bonds here, right, that are connecting the different carbons together. Each one of those bonds, those chemical bonds, has energy in it. It's like potential energy, like gasoline that hasn't been burned yet. And your body is then going to use that potential energy to make a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which in and of itself is another storage molecule for energy, but it's like quick energy. It's like you can get it really fast, you can get it very easily, and it's, it's small, so it can be transported through your bloodstream, through many different places in your body to be able to be utilized as needed. So the process of cellular respiration takes that glucose, breaks it down, and then uses the energy to make ATP. So it doesn't break it down into ATP, but it uses the energy that's stored in it to manufacture ATP. And that's what's done in cellular respiration. You know what I'm going to say, right? Like I'm going to give you a spoiler alert here. We are also going to be learning about cellular respiration and how that process actually works. So here's just a flow chart here showing you kind of <clears throat> the energy, right? So plants, the energy in living things, um, is used to make small molecules into larger molecules, and sometimes those molecules are proteins and sugars and fats and DNA and new tissues and things in animals. Um, they're actually used to make the same kind of dealios in plants as well. You can also take that energy to move your muscles and keep you warm for homeos, you know, homeos part of your homeostasis process, but in 
that um, since we are homeothermic or we are endothermic organisms, we have to maintain our body temperature, which we'll talk about coming up in some upcoming lessons as well, right? Not all of this energy from the glucose molecule is used to make ATP. Some of it is used to do other things. For example, making amino acids and um, those amino acids are used to make proteins. It also requires nitrogen as a necessary ingredient as well, not just carbon, not just oxygen, to help manufacture um, RNA and DNA. You need to have that nitrogen because you've got a lot of nitrogen that is found in those molecules. So those are kind of, again, the essential ingredients that makes up living things and kind of how they are used. And that's what we're focusing on here. You don't need to understand photosynthesis or respiration. You do not need to understand um, some of the processes they're talking about, they talk about the Krebs cycle and stuff like that. You just need to understand kind of that glucose is used to make carbohydrates like starches and silos and um, that there's energy stored in them and that that energy can be used by organisms through cellular respiration to make ATP to help make things and do things in your body and keep you warm and, and make your muscles contract and have you move and you know all sorts of, of things that we need that energy for. All right, so that is this unit lesson from this unit in a nutshell. Again, let me know if you have questions or concerns. Otherwise, I'm having some issues with this mouse again. I, I think it doesn't like to play very well with our recording. I think that's what's going on here. But if I can actually navigate down to the button. There it is. I will say goodbye and we'll see you in the next one.